morning and good afternoon. Welcome to this week's edition of the Digital Shop Talk Radio. I'm Tom Dorsey, joined by my co-host, Uwe Kleinschmidt, and we've got a great show for you today. It's Remember, it's part five of our 10-part series on transitioning to a digital shop to achieve dreams you never thought possible. Grow your ARO, grow your weekly revenue, you know, grow your business, whatever your goals might be. This is a show for you to be involved in. And we've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about how do you use education and not just videos and the pictures that the digital inspection provides, right? But how do you educate, set the motorist expectations before the drop, at the drop, through the service experience, post-service experience with your follow-up, really adding that educational customer service experience to get higher approval rates keep them more loyal to your business. And we got two great shop owners, actually two great Napa shop owners coming in to join us today. Uh, we got uh, Donnie Hudson from Troy Auto Care in Troy, Michigan, right outside of Motor City. Welcome, Donnie. Hope You're everything's welcome. Good. Thank you. Buddy. Happy and honored to be here. Yeah, man. Uh, really glad to have you on. Finally been, uh, you know, been, been, been looking forward to it for a long time, partner. Well, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. And you guys might remember Tyler Hubbard. Tyler was actually on our first episode ever of the Digital Shop Talk Radio. It's hard to believe Tyler's been 70 episodes ago, man. There we uh, go. Thanks for coming on. Not a problem. Then there he goes. So that was <laughs> back. That back right cameo. That's the way I like it. Mike drop right. and leave. You know, it's all uphill from there once you got that type of an intro. <laughs> Thanks and as always, Dustin on the graphics and the polls and, and producing the show, we really appreciate Dustin's got us a good prep for today. And so we really want to kind of jump right into it. And what we're going to be talking about today, you know, and make sure you got a pad of paper in front of you and a sharp pencil, because you're going to have some takeaways. And the big takeaways that we want you to focus on today is really how do you establish, right, that expectation for your customer and we're going to have Tyler and we're going to have Donnie telling us kind of how they do it. And you get an insight from a couple different shop owners and you can compare to how you guys are managing these things. Right. And um, but really prep them for what's to come. Prep them for that digital inspection approval process. Right. And how do you educate them? How do you set those expectations? And then what we like to call the Amazon rule and we'll dig into it a little bit is how do you, and it's hard to do, right? This is one of the things that's hard to do. And it's one of those process changes that become difficult, especially if you've been doing it for a long time, right? But that's how do you prep your story? Remember, we've been talking about it in this series is how do you get the, the rough draft from the text? How do you publish, you know, edit and get it ready for publishing and then publish that story out to your customer, right? And then you got to kind of wait for them to buy it. You got to wait for the books to start moving off the shelf you have to resist picking up the phone and calling them and running kind of the same old tired sales process that you did uh, when you're analog or paper-based, right? Uh, so the big takeaway there is apply that Amazon rule, set yourself up for success, get that information out there. And then you got to kind of let it marinate, right? You got to wait, you got to let it do its work. You got to let that education sink in. You got to let them start to formulate their understanding and their second questions then we get that contact, and then it's a much shorter conversation with much higher approval rates. Would you guys agree? I mean, does that sound like a, a magic formula for success and one that you've been applying? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, definitely. Right. So fantastic. Let's jump right into it. Uwe, do you want to pick it up? And, you know, I like um, your explanation of and really the insights when we talk about, you know, what's so effective about that Amazon rule about really setting up that motorist interaction and then letting it do its work. Sure, thank you. Of course. Um, we all are consumers and there's probably nobody in the audience right now who's not using Amazon. If you are, please, uh, I would love to talk to you why not, but what we all experience is really, we have now this freedom to sit in front of a screen, have all the time we want to, and use the information presented to us to make decisions. Right? There's nobody influencing us in that moment. 
and and that started with books if you remember that it has been a while ago and then amazon turned that into now a whole huge network of literally anything right because it took them a long time to figure out how to make us browse and as we browse products because we're still talking products not services yet i want to add but products um, and make decisions and buy and they have it down now and we got all you can say conditioned to do that every online shopping website gives me plenty of opportunity to browse a product, make a decision and define when I do it and how long it's going to take me. That's my choice in my control as a consumer, right? Somebody coined the statement, you know, we as consumers want to buy not being sold. And that's the short form, short form of what we're trying to say, right? And that's something completely different than getting interrupted by a phone call while sitting at work or at home, put my mind to a different topic and be in, in listening to what is mostly a sales pitch, yep. right? And, and, and so lots of service advisors who grew up this way and have been doing that for dozens of years now have it challenge to sh switch a little bit but I i'm highly confident because again we are all amazon consumers right we have that habit already as second nature and the more we can um help as outer vitals and as shop to give the motorists the right online experience the higher the approval rate will be there's no doubt about it anymore right probably four or five years ago we would have said is it really working? Is it not just all smoke and mirrors? In the meanwhile, we know it's not. Yeah, right? well, it Amazon works. Did a lot of that work. And actually, really what's happened is Amazon has conditioned the market, right? Yes. It, 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 it's regardless, you know, Amazon kind of grew to this customer experience over time and through a lot of data and millions and millions of transactions to figure right. out, hey, if we give them the reviews right here, if we let them see comparable products, if we give them this information and specs and, and they'll consume this stuff and they'll stay on the page and then they'll do enough of the research to where boom they put it into the you know add it to the shopping cart and Tyler when we first had you on you know that's exactly what we came on to talk about right it was right after conference and you guys yeah. had gotten some epiphanies and some takeaways there and you went in and, and you saw amazing results. It was something like a hundred dollar ARO increase over a couple of months. And it's not like you guys were uh, fresh in the game, right? You've been around that you knew what you were doing and to put on that type of a, of an increase is pretty spectacular in that year. Gosh, it's been about a year and a half. How have you worked on implementing that Amazon, you know, rule process? You know, are you, do you find yourself fighting to go back to, you know, stop, pick up the phone and try to call them or, or are you still got a really solid process in on waiting for that phone call to come in and how's that working for you? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think first things first, it's really getting it in the consumer's hand and letting, letting them digest it. Um, and the other thing too, is I think the setup at the beginning and it's, it's repetitive. And I mention it numerous times and I mention it, mention it when they call into the appointment and when they come in and drop it off, this is the process that we're going to go through. This is how we are going to get you the information. This is what we would like you to do. What we feel works best for you as far as your process, your understanding. Can you please go through the link? Can you please review anything? And then at that point, call us. We can answer any questions and go through estimates. And we reiterate it numerous, numerous times. Um, and, you know, before, before that meeting, I was probably still stuck in my ways in a lot of ways as far as the old the way the old process goes, the old sales process. And now it's, it's more of them coming to me. These are my questions about the information I received. These are the answers I would like to get. And it's a lot, it's a lot easier process. I'm not trained to answer all questions. I'm just answering the questions you had for me as a consumer, um, which sometimes are, some people might have these questions and some people might have different questions and it's, they're bringing those, those to me. 
Um, so it's a lot easier process. Yeah. And so are you showing, so especially like, let's say you got a new customer comes in, are you showing them, you know, a printout of a digital inspection? Do you have it kind of loaded up on a monitor? You show it, kind of give them a step, you know, walk through on how to engage with that uh, once they receive it? Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. I mean, if I do, typically I do it on my phone. It's, oh, it's, yeah, yeah, great. It's just easier. They'll see it. Um, I can go through it that way. Um, a lot, most of the time, like, people are so savvy anymore, you don't really need that's hey, you're just going to get a link and click on it. And then they open it up and they kind of start going from there. You know, I mean, most people get it at this point in time. Um, yeah. Granted, yeah. There, are, there are some customers that might need to spend a little bit more time with them. And even like once my 20 minutes is up and I need to give them a call and maybe they haven't seen it yet. Well, I got questions as far as going into it. Okay, can you pull it open on your phone? Now go through it and call me back when you get an opportunity. Um, most people get uh-huh. it. But how was the change you, for you? Oh, sorry. Go I was just gonna. Go. I was just gonna ask Donnie if you know if Donnie, are you guys doing kind of the same type of process on intake, right? Especially with the new customer, how are you kind of setting them up for what's about to happen? We actually kind of do the same thing. We don't uh, actually pull up a, a DVI and show them, although that's a good idea. Um, and, and I wrote that down. I'm taking notes yeah. too. Uh, but. Our process is a little bit that we, we go through the customer, what's going to happen, exactly what's going to happen, how their communication is going to happen. And then we'll ask them if they would like us to phone, to phone or once they get the report, if they want to call us. And, and we always kind of kind of lay out the, green, the, the, the groundwork so when they'll know exactly, I've stepped away, okay, I got my digital vehicle inspection, let me click, let me open it, have any questions. But uh, you know, nowadays, you're, you're right, uh, the best consumer you want is an educated consumer. People are spending more time at home. So when what we have noticed is when we've been sending the reports out, it's not been like a 15 or 20 minute turnaround time. It's been 30, 40 minutes because people are going online and researching what you're saying. And mm-hmm. they're also researching the DVI. Um, they're coming up with questions, lots, lots and lots more questions we ever used to get once we sent the DVI out. Um, the service advisors are, are answering all kinds of questions, different you know what does this do and how does this work and it's just it's been absolutely wonderful it's an educational tool and they're happy to get it that's what's incredible the other thing is um we're talking about dvis i'm talking about so my other our other shopper toronto care too and i have four phenomenal uh women on the counters young girls they're service assistants they know how to talk to customers they're tech savvy they're better than i am uh Mm -hmm. so i hear them in my office and um (laughs) we have a used car lot that that we deal with and they, when we took over the other shop, they, they tried this out and we gave them their first digital vehicle inspection. The owner of the, of the shop said, you know, what is this? This is what we inspected your car. He absolutely loved it. So he includes that DVI. We have his own custom logo. Auto Vitals helped me design that. And he sells that to every single car that we inspect for him. Two things happen. Number one, the customer's happy. They got a complete vehicle history, other vehicle before they bought it. And number two, I just gained a new customer because where are they going to bring that car back? They're going to bring it back to me. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, it's been a phenomenal process. And, and, I, and you know, I got to agree with Tyler. So, you know, I'm still kind of stuck on the, on the same old, my brother Frank's worse. He's, he's always on the phone with customers. I still like, didn't the call customer call, come, come back in. Mean, it's been 20 minutes. We sent the, they call it. And my service like, chill, we got this, Donnie. We'll, we'll, they'll call. And, and then we will give them a reminder call if not. But the process has just been incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I know you were going to come in and, and it's really, it's, it's creating that transparency, right? And, and, and allowing them to see not only what that process is and what the expectations are coming up. What do you, what do you need to me to do in an hour from now, right? Because I may be in a dentist chair, or I, so I might be able to shuffle my day around so that I'm available to you. And if I know that it's coming in, I'm ready for it and I get faster response rate, right? Faster uh, approval rate ultimately when you do it right. Um, and, 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 and really, you know, that was a brilliant point, Donnie, is really because that's exactly what happens if you, you know, you can get them to a point where you make them curious and then whoop, there they go. They're now lost on the Internet all day. And maybe they're on your your competitor's website getting all that educational information. And that's the last place you want them. So right. you really need to think about that story that you're publishing and you're getting ready to send out to your to your customer needs to answer those questions, right? Anticipate those questions. And then that educational content, those videos, 
And that that could take a lot of different ranges, right? It could be a video that Auto Vitals provides, or or your um, NAPA service um, assistant, your NAPA digital service videos are great, right? Or it could be a video you shoot on your phone that's you in your shop talking directly, you know, and you just host it up on YouTube. However, you know, whatever's going to work best for you and and how you want to communicate with that market is how you should apply that information. But the most important part is that it answers those anticipated questions. Why? Because to Donnie's point, it keeps them from Googling it. (laughs) It Gives them all the stuff they need to know to make a decision right now. I approve, Donnie. Thank you for that information. Right. It's convenience. Uva? Yeah. I, yeah. I want to I, I want to go a little bit more in into that, if that's OK. It, it's simply our behavior as consumers. Right. Uh, it doesn't uh, just for anybody in the audience who still doubts this is a this is a, you know, a, a good thing to do because it's kind of counterintuitive for every season service advisor. Um, we had the luck of having one shop where the two service advisors basically did a completely different process. So so they followed all the procedures to the T. The numbers told us they they, they follow what the boss told them. But one had $4,000 higher weekly revenue than the other one with less cars. The big difference was the motorist research time was more than twice as long than for the other person. And so I went to the shop owner and said, um, you, you need to watch and listen to what they, what your service advisors are doing uh, on the phone. There must be a substantial difference. And voila, it was, right? So it is a, so one service advisor took the Amazon rule to heart, was waiting for the phone call. The other service advisor was calling out, did the traditional process, kind of applied sales pressure, and mentioned at the end, have you looked at the inspection results? Right? Day and night. And and so um, as you... Uh, do we see that here on the picture? So you see the weekly revenue, the difference of 3,600 here, but you also see um, the hours sold um, per day, right? Between nine and 12, three hours sold more per day, right? That's that's the difference what we are talking about. This is not just, you know, we come up with some new university topic here. This is real stuff with real results. And 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 why, I, I wanna go back to what you guys were talking about. Three years ago, probably, or five, it was all about who can I talk to in my friend's circle or family who claims to know about cars, right? Yep. And that's gone. You go totally. to Google, and and so that's to to a degree which is also for the shop sometimes you know scary but it so i give you one example right um five years ago if you said we have to replace the timing belt and i don't know how many people actually know what a timing belt is they would have asked you right now they said no oh i can just google what a timing belt is and you don't know that they don't know. You hang up, you think you have done your education, and then they Google a timing belt and you just told them it's 750 bucks. And then what do they find? Oh, it's a rubber band for 150. Yep. So, so who is now doing connecting the dots between the 150 and the 750? You leave it up to Google to, to, to basically close that gap, right? And so transparency is the ability to compare and that can be scary, right? And 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 so some still say, let's not allow to compare. The service advisor should explain it on the phone. It needs to be our message, the shop's message. We wanna 
kind of control the message, right? And the other one is encouraged to compare. In other words, the more, here's the other good thing, which is going for us. Google is a great thing, right? Lots of information, huge blessing. Google is a huge curse, lots of information. What is right? I find 20,000 hits for the same topic. Number one, do I have the time to look through all those? And here I have five contradicting answers. Which one is right again? And you know, Uwe, that's one of the things right there that you have full control of that you can set up. That's to Donnie's point. That's how you keep them from doing that research is that comparison. Yes. And so what are we talking about from a comparison perspective? Well, a brand new air filter next to their air filter. Mm -hmm, how, totally. how they're, they're comparing, you know, that's what the drip trace for. They're comparing, but not only that, they're comparing their actual component, right? Their actual part. That's my dirty old filter next to, oh my gosh, that's what it's supposed to look like. It, it, it ends it. You don't have to go Google, do I need an air filter, right? <laughs> we call that the shock and awe. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Drop those shock and awes, right? Yeah. You know, it's just like you don't need to Google uh, if you want to buy that, you know, late night weight loss uh, because you see the skinny. And then, then and there's me, you know, I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, just uh, sign me up. Get, get, get the expedited shipping. <laughs> I need it overnight. But uh, but, you know, and back to Uva, back to your point about I want to bring up a really important point. And this for, you know, make sure you write this down, because uh, this is going to be key to your success is, to, you know, to the to the graph you were showing with that shop it had, you know, like you said, from the outside, from the KPIs, they were doing what the boss told them, right? They were sending the inspections and they were doing the edits. And the difference was in action. It was a behavior. And so you have to go in and that's why we were always pushing you to do, add into your process the inspection sheet audit and the process audit, the front counter audit and listening, you know, and you listen to the recordings of your calls uh, and, and do the whisper function in there so you can hear what's happening and where the breakdown is. If you're not getting the numbers as expected, or you keep hearing folks come on this show and they're like, Oh yeah, my IRO is this. And you're like, how are they doing it? They're lying. <laughs> That's because they go in and audit and, and, and check the things that the KPIs aren't going to tell you. Tyler, in your shop, how do you make sure that you're not having that type of a result where on paper, it looks like the guy's crushing it, but the results just aren't there. How do you do that audit? Uh, I mean, through the business control panel. I mean, I, I love, I love that aspect of auto models. I mean, it's, it's you can literally see. And the other thing too, is a lot of my indications on, are on motor, motorist research time. And the new one, the new one to me that I've been noticing more now than probably in the past. And I love how it's got the timer on it is I'll go through and they'll go through and they'll look at it and then they'll call me. And then we'll have our discussion and I'll go through like kind of, Hey, these are your estimates for these repairs. And then I'll hang up and then that thing will start spiking. It'll be going like over a thousand, like before they call me with like a four or 500 and then it's something new. And it's, it's definitely probably in the last three to four months that I've been noticing that is I've had, I've had a lot of motorist research time, like after we've had our conversation, which is definitely different. Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of mine is tracked off that way. And I think, when your motorist research time is in, in line with where it needs to be, kind of everything else falls into place. Your, your service advisors are, are doing their job, um, editing the pictures, highlighting what's important. Um, your technicians are taking the right pictures, are showing what needs to be done. They're giving you the right information. Um, they're doing what they need to be doing. So I think it all kind of leads back to that. I mean, obviously you can divide and conquer and look at different things um, as far as recommendations, things of that nature from your technicians. Are they taking enough pictures? Um, but if your motorist research time is in line, typically when I see that, my ARO is in line too. So awesome. No, that's great points, man. And hope uh, you know, write that stuff down because it's exactly, you know, those critical success factors, make sure that they are in that inspection sheet. And then it just let the process play out and you'll get those results. I mean, you got to try not to, right? <laughs> you got to try to fail, you know, if you've set it up. Donnie, are you doing something similar? How are you auditing your inspection process to make sure that, uh, 
that you know what you see in the KPIs is actually what the customer is experiencing, and we're we're you know we're putting ourselves in the best position possible to get that approval. Well, I, I have not been. I have to be honest with you. I have not been re- uh, tracking the, you on the uh, show motors. Then, What's that? It's, it's a good thing we had you on the show then. Yeah, I, I, I am not. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I'm taking homework. notes. Yeah, I, I'm not <laughs> tracking uh, motors research time, which I just highlighted so we got to start doing that i'm going to talk to my service advisors right now because i want to start tracking that we use the dashboard and pull reports and i'm i'm i am not i mean i I, you know we all have faults and my sometimes i let things slip back there because it's busy and you know and we're trying to i'm trying to create the consistency board where everything is consistent we have a process and some slip through and then some cars get a quick inspection which is unacceptable by any means we need a you know stick with that and but we get so busy and I, Oh, we got cars all over. I got appointments. Well, I, we have to, so my consistency rate is not the best. So I have, I am flawed and I'm working on that right now, changing that. So we are consistent and it is one. And now that I put the girls in charge of that, they're going to be right back there, but pulling the reports off the dashboard, the dashboard's incredible, a lot to maneuver, but man, you can report on everything. When we are using this and it's a tool that I, I use all the time is when I pull the reports off of that, when the inspections are being done consistently, like they should be, and we're spending the texture, spending the time, we have a 38% increase, 38% increase in ROs and, 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 and work coming in, getting approved that was never indicated to come in additional work. Those figures don't lie. These reports, they're not just a DVIs to us. Uh, to me, they're a DVE, they're digital vehicle education. They're mm-hmm. also a DVP, they're a digital vehicle protection. The P, the, the, P, the protection. How is that a protection? It comes in, it gets checked out. How many times is the, the car was just in your shop. You didn't catch that? Well, actually we did. It's on, if you would have spent a few minutes, it was on your report, it's been noted. So, and it's it's not, and I liked um, what Uva was talking about and, and Tyler, you know, customers don't want to be sold. They, they, they want to buy. So you give them the education, you give them the report, let them go in here and do that. They're going to do that. So I, I need to get better at my control board and watching my arrows. I, I've got a couple of different situations at my shop that are unique um, that I don't get true data. So I got I to gotta work with autobios on the side to try and, and uh, correct that because my numbers are skewed. But that is one thing that I'm going to, I want to, I just wrote down is managing the motors research. I, that, that's a great tool, an awesome tool. Why am I using it? I don't know. Thanks, Tyler. I am now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's exactly it, right? Because that motorist research time, what you're looking at, the higher the motorist research time is, is exactly what Donnie just said, is them buying and not being sold. The shorter the motorist research time, the the longer they're being sold. Sold, right. Total totally. operation, right? I mean, it's just a, it's a quick... It's a quick indicator for me if things are working properly. If, if my motorist research, research time is not correct, um, then some then then I need to dive in deeper. Um, typically, my ARO is down. Typically, my technicians aren't taking clear enough pictures. Typically, my service advisors aren't documenting things well enough. I mean, some, something's falling through the crack. Um, if my motorist research time is up, then typically everything's working the way it needs to be working. Hey Uva, did you see that? Um, did you see that question from Tony? No. Uh, she's, she's asking, is there a way that we could have some sort of like a library of mint condition parts that we could easily select to show a good cabin air filter? Yeah, this is. Uh, thanks, Tony, for that. This is has been on my mind for years now. Um, maybe I'm making it too complicated, but. Envision you have 35,000 different vehicle types and lots of those parts are different for every vehicle type. That's a library of millions of pictures. I promise we're going to get there. It might not be quickly and we might need your help uh, to taking mint condition pictures of a part and then um, give it back to us so we can build the library together because it's a lot of pictures. But, yeah, and kind of the first step that we did, you know, and this was a couple of years back now or a year right. and a half back, is we allowed you to attach picture, right? And so really what you want to do, and this should be a process in everybody's shop, when you're putting that component on, you know, and you unbox it, take a picture of it, you save it. Then, you, you know, you download it into a folder right on your desktop and you, you can categorize, you know, part, pictures of parts and then filters and then, you know, whatever. 
right? Brake pads and rotors, and you can break down those, those folders into really easy to navigate. And then you just go in and you grab one and attach it into the inspection sheet. It's, you know, it's, it's a workaround for now until like Uva said, we're able to wrangle the billions of pictures and get it into some <laughs> easy and compressed enough format to where it doesn't take your TVP two days to load, right? Um, Tom, but, like uh, the old saying was, is pictures tell a thousand words and that is I so know. true. Pictures worth a thousand dollars. That's true. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler will tell you. Yeah. <laughs> he does it all day long. It is yeah. raining yeah. money in Kansas City. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, and uh, I want to give a shout out um, to uh, we got a new uh, uh, Damien Sharbowski's brand new. He's got just got his iPads in. Yeah, you know, Damien, you're starting out in the right spot, buddy. Coming on this show, I got to tell you what. Damien's a great friend of mine. He's another. He had this here when he got started. Yeah, Damien's Damien's great. He's just like another me. So I'd like he'd be a great one to have on the show as well. Uh, he's yeah, good. Another Nap Auto Care Center, but great guy. Beautiful, beautiful. Welcome. You made a smart move. You're a smart man, Damien. Tell your wife that. <laughs> <laughs> Soon to be. Up. He's getting married to Steve. Okay, okay. I'll back you up. <laughs> hey, well, we were talking about, you know, the other part of transparency is really being able to manage those expectations, right? And really set the customer up for what's going to happen. And, you know, here's the kicker, guys, is that, uh, and I should say in gals, is that, is that when you do this right, it's not just for today. It's not just to get, you know, an extra job or an extra hour sold today. When you set up those expectations, it's, the life cycle of their vehicle and their experience and how they're going to do business with you forever into the future. So it also includes what's going to happen at the pickup and what's going to happen in between services and what's an expectation for your specific service intervals versus the OEM service intervals and things like that, right? How does seasonality affect your market? Those are educational topics that you're going to want to make sure that you're setting up those expectations right from the introduction, right from the gate, right? Add intake if they're brand new. If they've been with you forever, hey, they probably know a little of that, but don't ignore them. You send them out those reminders in the new digital education. Maybe you're going to do a custom campaign where you just set up, hey, we're a full digital shop now, and this is how we do business. We appreciate uh, you know the years that you've been coming to us, and we're making this change to benefit you into the future and continue to do years of, of business with, right? So include them into this transparency as well don't assume that they're just you know going to go along to get along uh, make sure that they're in there and you're applying that same educational and expectation management to your long-term customers as well as the brand new customers and and it's a really simple process it just needs to be like every new thing trained and become second nature instead of saying there will be a phone call sometime in the future you basically create kind of a suspense right you show as tyler said before you have a bookmarked inspection result maybe you do a little clinics across your service advisors and technicians who builds the best inspection result and then take it bookmark it and every customer is is then being informed that this is what you're going to get be specific not sometime soon but more like in 60 minutes in whatever your time range is right depending on how you run your shop that creates suspense and expectations to the degree that they actually check their phone and are waiting for it right it's That's correct but right. it's it's just like the Domino's pizza um, tracker, right? Same thing. So so we can help you automate that by simply moving the vehicle through the workflow and sending out expect uh, uh, um, messages which manage those expectations. The key is it has to be as precise as you can make it, because then people are waiting for it. That's the key. So the more you can do that, the higher the opening click and research time will be. Yep, agree to that. And again, I wanna, sorry for falling back into the discussion we had before. Um, I cannot Man. stress enough <laughs> that Google is the universe of education. 
by creating an inspection result with rich information so it is like Google, you save them a lot of Google searches. They don't need to Google. So this uh, um, fear of people taking your inspection result and start shopping or or comparing what they find on Google is not happening if it, because it's vehicle specific. The more concrete things about their vehicle is on the inspection result combined with educational information, the less the need to Google it. Right. I've always, I've always been blessed in that aspect because um, I never was a technician. So as I go through uh -huh. it and, and edit my inspections, it's pretty easy for me to look at it. I mean, granted, I've, I've built some knowledge over the years, but it's pretty, it's still pretty easy for me to look at it. And how would I want, how would I want to be this information told? To me? And I have zero technical background. I mean, I apologize, but if you want me to put the brake pads on for you, it's going to be a real, real struggle. So I, it, that's been something that's been a true blessing for me. It's never been a technician. I need the technicians to tell me what's important. How would they sell the job to me? And in turn, I can, I can, parlay that information to the consumer. Um, and, and that's been something that's been very, very helpful for me. I can kind of look at it from the consumer aspect. And that's exactly how it should be set up. And like to Donnie's point, right? He's got uh, his, uh, you know, yeah. his, his, his bevy of beauties up there. And, you know, they don't have to be, you know, master techs, right? They, they, they can, you know, and that's the key because that's really the goal. That's what you should be shooting for. If your technician can set it up, and can give information in through his notes and pictures that pretty much anybody can understand what's going on there and, and at least figure out what the next step should be. And then you've got the software to help you look up the exact, you know, the particulars, right? So so then all of a sudden now you can really start to hire folks for their customer service ability. Absolutely. Uh, their loyalties, you know, their, their personalities, right? <laughs> And, uh, and somebody who's going to grow along with your business, not just kind of keep working you for a higher pay raise because they'll just, you know, I can go down the street, you know, and, uh, and kind of keep you in that spot. So, um, you know, that's really one of the things that, that you know, I know Uva has been working, you know, I'm going to say half your life, but you're a little older than that <laughs> to provide is, is exactly that is to help you and to help your team uh, be able to focus on the customer instead of the details, right? We get lost in the details and we forget about the customer a lot of times. Now we'll focus on the customer. Hey, the details are embedded in, you know, or they're, they're right there. You, you have folks that want to research all that stuff. Good. Knock yourself out. You have other folks that just feel comfortable and, 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 and confident and, and reassured that the information's in there, but I trust you now. And that's really what that means. If I don't go Google you, it's because I trust you. That's the new. Yeah. That's the new currency of trust, right? Yeah, I mean, kind of stepping off topic a little bit, but I mean, for me, I know right now I have a 19-year-old at the shop um, that just started. He loves the process, and he loves the aspect of his inspections outlined for him, as far as how he's going to go through the vehicle, how he's going to inspect it. These are the things he's going to inspect. These are the things he's for sure going to take pictures of. And on the flip side, when I hired Shane, um, my office. My manager for the shop, you know, two years ago, he loves the digital inspection as far as, hey, this is how I get the information from the text. This is how I get it to the customers. Um, as far as training employees, it's been fantastic for me, and it's it's expedited the process. And like I said, as far as these these young techs, man, they love it. They get they get going on. Yeah, yeah, because that's the other. That's a great point too. Is that once you have that process defined, it becomes pretty simple to ramp up a brand new technician into it right and not only uh is it is it easy for them because it's it's pretty you know it's intuitive and and, and, and you've got that uh laid out but then the other uh techs in the shop are gonna help them out and support them and and, and show them what the best practices are and kind of they do kind of a self-audit a team audit to make sure everybody's putting out the high level quality information uh and you know you got you know, half the work you need to do and, and you really, you know, reap the benefits of having that consistency and the ability to ramp folks up. They see higher build hours, you know, higher paychecks and, you know, uh, they start be, you know, you get less turnover and they start becoming more loyal to your shop. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it really benefits everybody concerned uh, when you have that open book kind of transparency 
easy to follow process and set those expectations, both with the customer and your crew. Yeah, and the other, the other thing too is one thing I think I took away from the first from the first conference I came to was one of the best ones I heard was, "Hey, text a link to your technician and let them see the inspection." Yeah. And then at that point they're like, "Okay, I get this now. These pictures need to be better. These pictures need to be clearer. This is what we're doing for the customer." I mean, and that's some that's some huge to me. Did you send this to your mom? (laughs) (laughs) You better not be sending it to mine. No, that's awesome. Yeah, that's the greatest way, right? Because that self-assessment, that's really where you're in the sweet spot. Yeah. We've talked about this quite a bit, right? Is when you're in your shop meetings and you've got those folks and they're telling you how they could do it better or how you should make some changes to do it better or they feel that they could do a better job for you if you would make, you know, these edits or change the process this way, man, you are in the sweet spot. You've got them bought in, engaged, and they see the value. And so now they're going to help you make it more valuable. And all of that flows down to your motorist, you know, and to your customer. And then the appreciation that you get from them is keep some oil, you know, keeps them coming back forever. That's the name of the game. Absolutely. So we want to jump in. I know we got some numbers loaded up. Yes. Camping at the bed over there. (laughs) <laughs> so Tyler and Donnie if you are okay with that uh, we would share some of your numbers and talk about what's what what you can write down for uh, as takeaways for your own shop uh, assuming a lot of shops in the audience um, might have similar patterns in, in their shop should we should we do that yeah, I'm okay sure. with that. That's fine. No problem. We're going to get a live check-in by Uva. You know, I, I know that the that our trainers and advisors, Chris and Bill, where's Bill, by the way? Bill, get in here. I know you're around here somewhere. Uh, they 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 have to be on the edge of their seat watching Uva do a live check-in right now. Make sure <laughs> this is getting recorded. <laughs> oh, okay. there okay. are, we have so great advisors. They're all better than me. Chris um, is in here. Chris said she's waiting. So, so this is the multi-shop board we used at both of your shops, uh, Donnie, and then I seventy Tyler. Yeah. And, and 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 you can see all the details. I want to point out one thing, Donnie. I would love to talk to you about is your car count. It looks like that the average research time by the motorist is relatively low in both of your shops, but the car count is relatively high. So my assumption is you have a lot of uh, drive-bys, walk-ins. Yes. And that those walk-ins basically get sold at the counter. And so the average research time is relatively low. Is, is, that, is that a fair assumption? It is, but they'll research, because they'll get the report, they'll actually research, yeah, it is because they're researching in the front office as they get sent to them. Um, okay. So, yeah, and we do we do have a lot of appointments, lots of walk-ins at both right. locations. And, Bill, what's and, the best practice there, buddy? As far as um, the inspection, like yeah, I said, I it needs to be done the same on every car, and we definitely don't want to go ahead and, and waste that car that's coming through there by just rushing it through. You know, it's that 300% rule, right? You can apply it to the digital inspection. You send it 100% of the time, uh, whether they're a waiter or a walk-in, um, because, you know, and it's funny, you kind of Tyler was touching on a little bit ago, right? Is, you know, you'd be surprised when they get back into that information and when they research that. You see your motorist research time might be spiking at midnight or something, right, for those late night folks. But they go in and it's because when that, that's when you want them in there, you know. I mean, not of course, you need approval right away, but but that's for the deferred stuff, right? Is you want them comfortable and focused and looking at that information on their time instead of when you tell them to do it, because they're going to focus and they're going to, you know, that stuff's going to sink in and then you get the results. Um, so 100% of the time you send that out and you give them the exact same process. They should be open it while they're sitting in the waiting room. They should be going through there uh, and reviewing the information. So just so, like when we're diagnosing the performance on a car, we need to look at some other things also because it's interesting that the edited picture percentage for uh, Troy's shop on the top and Tyler's on the bottom relatively match. So we have to go ahead and understand also that, you know, 
um, Tyler is taking on average 23 pitchers and uh, Troy's are taking 4.78. So we got to go ahead and just like when we're diagnosing a performance vehicle, we got to look at some other data besides just that number. Yeah, and that's the drill, so, that's that audit we were talking about. Yeah, so I would like to um, also look at the far left. So on purpose, I didn't show ARO because I knew everybody's going to look at this and immediately compare with yourself. So I took it out. Um, here is the number of inspections sent by appointment. So, so it looks like, Donnie, if the numbers are right, and you mentioned there, there is a, there's a potential for skewed numbers, so we might want to dig into it. But so number one, I want to tell you, if you just look at the trends, I mean, you're doing an awesome job because you, you can see edited pictures uh, inc uh, increased by 455%, right? Awesome. We just need to continue the trend and we're fine. Correct, yes. Right? And, and, and the same for the inspection sent uh, by appointment. But we are um, very, the, the baseline is pretty low. So, so my question is, where, where do you see the most um, reason, or I should say, potential for the future to increase that number that every car gets an inspection? or uh, state inspections or other things in your way? Can, can you, or fleet accounts or w whatever the reasons might be? It's going forward is, yeah, we, 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 we're actually, we're gonna put the inspections in the tech assistance hands to get the basic inspections done. And that's what I love about the new TVPX coming out. I'm excited to get on that because that's gonna set course the, the, the uh, the way we're going to continue doing inspections and, and everything gets inspected. The the issue that I have it screws it, it screws up my numbers is um, we have a few shops that we do strictly alignments for, and those cars come in, they don't get inspected because they're from another shop, and we're doing alignments on. And that's so it's a it, sublet. Sublet, correct. And same thing with uh, we do with a lot of uh, mail trucks for the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, and same thing, we, we're not allowed to do inspections. Um, we have to do the paper routed inspections for the uh, postmaster. They don't accept digital vehicle inspections. So those don't get done as well. And they'll skew my numbers um, as I well. See. So I need to somehow or another, and I was working on Al with that on the back door that I've taken those out. So my numbers are not as skewed as they should be. Uh, one of the things that, that we're not getting done is guys were taking pictures, but they were not editing them. And, you know, having a class and sitting down with them, tell them how important it is to edit the pictures that you take, just taking a simple picture, you know, and sending it to a customer. But when you start editing them and throw a line in there, take a look at this, here's where your crack is. And when you edit them, it shows because sales, because what, what we were getting, and I'm, I'm going to share this, I'm now not shameful to do that, is you sent me a picture, what is that? Right. Well, the reason why they, they're asking what it is, because there's no detail behind it. There's no explanation behind it. There's no red mark behind it, no circle around it. So editing pictures is very, very important. And the techs are seeing that now. So it's just consistency. And that's what we're building back there. Uh, we've got some new tech assistants going to help in there. We're going to start front that um, and, and stay on that. I mean, because when we're doing it and we're doing it well, it sells itself. And it's not only that, but you know that every car comes into the shop is same pattern. It, it get inspected 100%. We're not spending less time on it. We're doing the exact same amount. And it's called follow through. And I've, I've had a problem with that. And that's what I'm working on at my shop. I, I would actually love to talk. I, I don't know how we're doing in time, but well, I believe. All day, Uwe. Okay. <laughs> 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 then let's do it. Uh, the, the sublet question. Um, so, Donnie, you did and fantastic job with the um, used car um, sales company. Um, what do you think about doing exactly the same with the shops you are uh, getting sublets from? You know, I've talk tried, to them. I have, and I've showed it to them. They said, we don't want no part of it. Just do the alignment and it will take care of the rest. I see. And, and that, that's unfortunate because we, we, that's, you know, we'll do four or five cars a day. And so it skews, it skews our numbers because they're in the track system, right. but it's shown as an inspection's not done. Um, so, and that, that was one of the, and the other issue that we had on the low RROs because our low, our, our ROs are low is because on the weekends we have a very inexpensive oil change and we right. run 30 or 40 of them every 
every every weekend on Saturday and Sunday. And the issue is because it's so low, it drives down my actual RO numbers. And I can't get those taken out of the equation to see where I'm actually at. So those are a couple of things that behind the scenes that hopefully right. you guys work with us. Um, but but there are challenges. Do you, I mean, do you do a cursory, whatever you call it, uh, oil change inspection too? Yes, like we certainly a, do. A, a, a 15 point. So, yeah. so yes, the AO might be affected, but uh, for us, it's all about trends, mm -hmm. right? If you didn't do that before, and the good news is the more you can upsell from the oil change inspection. That's you, how you make your money. Exactly. And again, exactly. Remember, we're not selling. We're giving right. it an right. opportunity for the customer right. to buy. Right, right, right. right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, Tom, early on, we were talking about what my sales advisors do. One of the things that they do is we don't call our DBIs digital vehicle inspections because inspection means you're going to find something wrong. You're going to, you're going to want me to spend money. So we actually said that we call it a, a digital vehicle report and it's a report on their vehicle. It's a strictly report on their vehicle, but it, it's, it's an inspection, but it's also a report. Um, and that seems because the inspection, oh, you're going to tell me what I need. I used to get that all the time. You're going to tell me what I have to buy. Well, actually it's a report a condition of your vehicle and that's that's changed a lot that's helped out a lot actually but um yeah, yeah we created a special uh vehicle inspection for the weekend oil changes so yes the ro's are going to be lower but the inspections are still getting done but they're just a special inspection there's just a quick right. 15 point and so at least those um stats to five percent is going to go up um, tremendously um i want to also talk about Dustin, if you could show uh, one of the more detailed, um, I think it's the next slide, um, the number of um, pictures seems a little low. And um, what, what I would highly recommend is, yeah, it's five. See, that's the last uh, 30 days. It's five on average. And what I highly recommend, Donnie, is um, instead of getting into picture counting, you can set up the inspection sheet with mandatory topics, and then great, it's a great point. And, the, and then technicians just take a picture because otherwise they cannot advance That's a great in, in in the software, right? Mandatory and so, topics. Right, right. So my my recommendation would be sit down with your techs ideally and say what are the things and service advisors what are the things we really want to have a consistent report on every single time and just make them mandatory and tyler can i ask you a question how many pictures do you have on your on a normal inspection do you normally take 23 point something if you go to the next slide oh wow yeah and think about it you know the four corner walk around that knocks out yeah. six ten right there yeah, I mean, I got right. four-corner knock around. I got um, license plates. I got, they take, I got like digital trend depth gauges they do on all the tires. So it gets. Wow. Okay. I mean, for, for me, it goes back to what you were talking about. Like, I, I think that's the other thing, too, that gets lost in translation a lot. It's like, I want to show the good with the bad. I don't still want to show the bad. Yes. If your tires are brand new, I want to show the tread gauges and the, the the depth on the tires that hey these things are good they got plenty of life left you got no issues there for a long long time um, that's a great spot for a video too you go ahead and spin that you show the profile in in motion you see the you know how uh if there's any bearing issues or anything like that right try to capture motion as much as possible in those documentations also yeah absolutely so yeah i mean i think that's going to increase pictures a lot too is when the guys understand that you know hey it's it's kind of easy, easy for a customer to buy, you know, brake pads and shocks when they know the rest of their vehicle is in great shape. They don't have to worry about anything else. So if you're showing both good and bad, it's a, it's a huge benefit. We also want to remember the good topics with measurements is how we're setting the customer up for retention. So change over time and help predict them the rate of wear in case they need to budget. That's all about what's in it for the customer and tying it to your shop forever. So we got to remember that also. That's a good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even things for like future attention. I mean, I got customers all the time that are always, hey, I know last time my vehicle was in, I was getting close on front brakes or whatever it might be. So we need to check those out this time. Yeah, and remember, that's an actual measurement on their actual vehicle over real time. It's not some 
software estimate of when your next, you know, uh, component might need replacing or when your next service interval should be. You can, you get two or three data points and you can say, hey, you're losing about, you know, a 30 second every two months, whatever it is. And you can do the math and say, you know, this is the life that you're, you either change your driving habits or, you know, I'll just go ahead and book you an appointment for this date and we'll go ahead and do those breaks. <laughs> so, Tyler, the inspection center by appointment seems be skewed by state inspections, I assume? Yeah, state inspections um, would be one issue. The other issue, which I'm kind of, I'm, I'm transitioning a little bit because I do have a lot of fleet accounts that I've had set up in a certain way for a very long time where in my own emails, I would send them a link for the inspection, send them an estimate at the same oh, I time. See. They would go through it. So a lot of those times that's not caught. Um, I just, and I'm, like I said, at this point, I'm actually transitioning to get a lot of them on. Hey, can I just text that to you? Because you seem to respond to me quicker when I do it that way. Right. Absolutely. Right. You know, and some of them still want them emailed so they can save them. Um, but I'm getting a lot of them transitioned over to that. Okay. And, and uh, on the state inspection, are you combining that with another inspection or is it because you could do that, right? The law yeah. does not um, no, no. forbid you or, or is there, is there a law which says it has to be the only inspection due on this car that's, you cannot do anything else. So on my state inspections, it's, it's kind of set up on customer expectations. If I have a customer that drops one off, um, then yes, we will go through a courtesy inspection at that time because I have I have more time with the vehicle. Um, if I have a customer waiting, um, typically all I will document would be just what's bad on the state inspection. Um, I see. I not go through my full blown courtesy inspection on the vehicle. What about a cursory inspection? Ten points, fifteen points, just to show them that. Here's that's available to you, yeah. And here's the value to it. It's so the things I fell in line. I mean, yes, that I've talked about doing that in the past. I mean, my one issue is a lot of times if somebody is really strict with me, that that's all they want is a state inspection, a twelve right. dollar inspection. I have people who don't buy bulbs from me, so at that point, it is what it is. I'm going to do the service that that's needed. But I have other customers that are more in line with the way I would like to run my business. Okay. So, that's kind of my so we go through that with shops in, in Texas all the time and they tell me the same story, but like Brenner at Save More just recently, we made one specifically on 10 topics that are on the inspection and we chose some things on it. The state keeps tripping shops over and trying to find them on like, did you check the power steering fluid? So that's one of their topics. They can prove to the state when they come by and say, you didn't check the power steering fluid, they got a picture of it. So we identified 10 topics on it specifically to do that. And their goal is to go ahead and, and do that quickly with the inspection, send it to the customer. Then there's a condition on the inspection sheet that says, we didn't perform a full vehicle health inspection. If you like to schedule and drop it off, this is what you should do and here's why. So, you know, we actually, are addressing it with him and um, we'll have some numbers on how that works out here probably in a few weeks. And I have had people, you know, that have came in for a state inspection, they've gone through that process and then maybe they've scheduled the work and they came back in at that point in time. And I've preempted had that conversation that, hey, this, this was kind of just check the mandatory things because that's kind of what you wanted. The next time we will go through a full blown inspection and then we'll see the epiphany of like, oh, okay, this is, far, far better than, than just doing the minimum. So I mean, I have, I've had it both ways, but that's kind of my thought process with that. Okay, it makes sense. Uh, I would encourage you to try that and maybe run that for a period of time with a shortened specific okay. inspection, and then let's compare results. Yes, you will always have the people who say, yeah. I'm here for a state inspection. What are you talking about? Right. Exactly. But, but the moment you have this bookmarked inspection result, here is what you're getting out of it, right? You might get a few more takers. Right? And I have had, honestly, we don't have very many waiters right now just due to the situation. With, you know, right, 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 right. 
Yes. So that's been a blessing for me as far as having more time with the vehicles, for sure. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's funny because now all those best practices become even more critical, right? You now you really got to add more detail into your picture edits because the folks aren't there and you can't, you know, uh, you know, follow up with them as easy. And so we've seen a lot of shops that have really tightened up. You know, you can see their their metrics or their adoption metrics approving dramatically, and it's, boy, it's been paying off. There's, we, you know, what we talked about it on the show not too long ago was, uh, you know, we saw quite a few shops with. 30, 40% drop in car count, but actually up in weekly revenue, right? Up in revenue. So, and it's because they fell back onto those digital best practices or finally committed to them. You know, <laughs> and unfortunately it took some, you know, drastic event to get them to move. But now that they did now, and if you're one of those shops, now you got to keep it rolling, right? Now that we're starting to come out, you know, of this and business is starting to pick up and come back to normal. You got to make sure all of those kind of, uh, you know, uh, emergency measures that you put in place that were working for you, keep doing them because your customers appreciate them. Up and with the business control panel, we've seen now that they can do it and they've got nowhere to hide if they start trending backwards. So that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I know we're up on the top of the hour. Um, you know, really important for some takeaway stuff is that, you know, if you're not doing it now, Make sure that you are not just, you know, adding educational information into your inspection, but you're really educating the customer on what your process looks like before drop off at the counter, during the inspection and during the work process steps. You know, what, what's going to happen at pickup? What's going to happen in between visits, right? Really set those expectations up for them. If you're not using the uh, workflow step notifications, Talk with your advisor, talk with the other shops, get on the Facebook forum and review some of the discussions up there, or ask some fresh questions about it, because what that's going to do is it reinforces. It's just like the old thing, you know, you, you, you kind of, you know, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them and then tell them what you told them. Right. And you really want to apply that through that process. So, yeah, I, I let you know, hey, you know, this is what's going to happen next. We're going to intake your vehicle. We're going to do a complete inspection. We're going to text it to you, which is your preference. It's going to come at about this time. Give a range, right? Set an expectation. It's going to be about an hour from now, two hours from now. Why well, I'm waiting for it. I'm ready for it. Uh, you know, I'm paying attention. Maybe I'm not going to go, you know, out of cell phone service or go wander around in the park or something. I'm going to wait and, and get your communication. Um, and then, and then really, you know, be able to tell them what's going to happen next through that communication, through that notification. So when you get that automated, and if you don't know what it is, you move it into a workflow step that says waiting for approval, and the customer says your inspection sheet is coming, right? You could even set up a workflow step that's before that approval step that's like a pre, you know, uh, a pre-approval or a notification step that just gets the person ready while you're doing your last little bit to edits then you move it into waiting for approval and automatically off that inspection she goes to that customer's phone right so you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of that because it it really helps to reinforce that process keep them engaged keep them notified it's more efficient for your for your front counter and then you get a faster response right all those things are going to benefit you allow you to be more efficient and productive throughout through through uh, you know over time um, Uwe, anything you want to add to that? Or Bill, anything you want to add to that? So I would like to go ahead and add one more thing to it. That is, in the past, we used to control the content the customer would get educated with by going and showing them their car at the car. Now we can control the content digitally the same way and recreate that same experience in every car. So just think about that. This is how we used to do it. We don't want them hanging around in the shop anymore. And there's a good reason why. And now we just want to recreate that same experience, control the content and the timing they get it, which is after the estimate's done, and you're going to win every time. Yeah, that's a brilliant point, right? Is you know, and I was like that, when I, especially when I was a kid, man. I spent most of my life hanging out in some poor guy's auto shop, you know. I mean, <laughs> now that I look back on those days, you know, that guy must have been like, what a nice guy he was. Let me just hang out, watch him all day, you know. But, um, People, you know, I mean, a lot of people, they love that stuff. They want to go back there and look at all the loud noises and the, you know, and the stuff that you're doing. And uh, 
but if you can give them some of that insight, you know, we have a really great episode that we talked a little bit about some of that stuff with Neil Daly a while back. And it's really kind of bringing your shop culture and bringing some of those hidden things into your inspection process. There's no reason why you can't have a video showing, you know, some more detail. This is how we use this tool or, or whatever it is. Profile your customer types, right? Is this person a, like a fanboy? Are they an aficionado of cars? Well, they probably like to see a little extra of that detail and you can have a experience tailored to them. If it's somebody who's very hesitant or mistrustful, well, then you can approach it from that perspective. You know, I know I got a little bit of a barrier to overcome because they've been burned in the past, whatever it is. So what type of information can I give them personal? It's me, you know, that type of thing coming right from the owner. Uh, you know, I stand behind my stuff. Those types of educational or, you know, um, uh, engagement type content really help you to kind of build that bond, that trust and then develop that customer for life, you know, uh, because they're not going to get that experience anywhere. But, but at I-70, right, Tyler? Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to, Go ahead. I would like to, I would like to add, just put yourself in your own shoes as a consumer and, and, and look how you research stuff you buy online. And that allows you to put yourself in your customer's shoes and, just do what you would like to see to your customers. I think that's one of the hardest things to do. We are so wrapped up in our work and what we do, and we are experts at it, that the layman's, the need for the layman's explanation gets lost. Yeah. And I think we're afraid to see fault in ourselves too. Um, so I mean, that's, like I said, it's, a, it's been a blessing for me to not be a technician and not be on that side of the right. shop. And me be right. able to say, okay, yeah, maybe me as a consumer, I, I wouldn't have understood that. I, I, you know, I can see the fault and, and, where, and where we went wrong as I said in the auto service. So yeah. I think that's huge. Well, and it's a huge, it has a huge impact on your customer. If you're willing to do that, then, then you know, I know I'm going to the right place, right? Um, and so they'll also get to see why we build this right directly into our new guided inspection sheet also. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's from feedback like that, right? And yep. it's really one of the, the great things. So if you're not engaged on the Facebook forum, get in there, right? Because it's really, you know, you help us to build the program. That's really what it is. It's shop owners building this product to benefit shop owners, right? Um, and the more feedback that we can get like that, the, the more aligned and the more uh, you know, the better of a solution that we can provide. Um, next week, you know, gentlemen, again, Donnie, Tyler, can't thank you guys enough coming on, really being, you know, uh, transparent, right? Walking the walk right there. We're talking about being transparent to that customer. These two gentlemen came on here and opened up their books, gave you a peek behind how, kind of how their operations are running, learned some stuff, you know, applied some, you know, shared some stuff. It's going to help other folks that are in the same boat. And that's really the name of the game here is, you know, we come together and we share this information and we collaborate to help each other be better. And when we're all better, the industry is better and it, and it, and it really benefits all of us uh, together. Right. So. Um, Best hour of the week. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sing Kumbaya on your own time. You know, I'm not going to, my, my voice is hoarse. I'm just not a good singer, but, but maybe Bill. Um, next week, yeah, you know, uh, speaking of Bill, you know, uh, next week we got a guy that's been working with Bill really closely. In fact, they spent two hours on Saturday, uh, working on stuff. If, if I, if I heard yeah, right, I, Bill. So, um, we're going to be kind of dovetailing off of this topic a little bit, managing motorist expectations, you deep. know, really diving deep and we're diving deep into Greg right now, who's self admittedly said that this is an area he needs to work on. And, um, he's going to kind of open up his process a little bit, just like these guys did today and show us, you know, what's working, what he needs to work on and what his plan is and, and the numbers that he's going to use to track it. So that's where we're going next week. Uh, please join us. Yes. Next Wednesday, same time, same place, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern and get registered, right? Get over to uh, autovitals.com slash DSTR and get registered. That way you get the notifications. It's easier for you to log in. You can participate in the chat and that kind of good stuff. And, um, um, if you can't make it live, then we'll send you the recording. Um, that's, yeah, so if you register, you automatically get sent the recording. So that's a good benefit of, of registering too. Yeah. That's the other thing is then you, yeah, you automatically get that recording sent to your inbox, watch it, uh, you know, when you have time, because you know, a lot of stuff you don't want to miss. I mean, today's episode was fantastic, right? Is the insights that we get to see. And now I'm really excited. You know, I want to have Donnie on maybe after summer or something, come on back. But actually I'd like to have both like of you that. back. 
because we got that uh, kind of baseline now from here. Let's see, you know, that, how did they implement, you know, and there's some challenges, right? We've got the COVID thing, the summer's coming, a lot of people aren't prepared. I mean, holy cow, I mean, you know, this unrest and all this stuff is impacting us. So it's really would be interesting to see how do we get three months out, four months out, what improvements were made and how did that affect you and impact you? Uh, so really looking forward. I can't thank you guys enough for coming on and doing that. I know it helps a lot of folks out that are, you know, looking to follow in your shoes and they might be having some challenges of their own. I just was in it for the free iPad Uvo was sending me. So <laughs> <laughs> there must, there must be a different, a different Uvo. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Right, thanks guys.